Obama announces support for same-sex marriage. Obama develops amnesty plan for young illegal immigrants. Obama signs pro-Israel legislation. The Ramusen polls show that the Obama-Romney presidential race is very close and there are reports that Romney has been able to garner more funds for his campaign than Obama. The U.S. economy is not improving fast enough and will be a detriment to Obama's chances of winning a second term in office. The threat of pink slips being sent out to employees of defense contractors just days before the election because of sequestering is another blow to the Obama campaign. Watch my video entitled Pink Slips to Go Out Days Before the 2012 Election. However, I believe Obama is holding a wild card and it pertains to an issue that has been discussed much in the news during Obama's entire term as president. It may be now politically convenient and beneficial for the current administration to do something about this issue. I am, of course, talking about the Iranian nuclear threat. How would an Israeli and or U.S. attack on Iran affect the presidential campaign or a U.S. involvement in the civil unrest in Syria? Watch my video entitled U.S. 2012 Election, Syria-Iran Conflict Impact. Here's a recent story out of Israel regarding the probability of an attack on Iran and the ramifications to the Israeli nation. Take a look. Former Party Minister Uzi Baram wrote a column in Israel Hayam today that urges Israel's leadership to tell the people clearly what lies in store when they execute an unexpected attack on Iran. What is most striking about the article is this. Recently, I've come to believe that the leaders of the state have decided to attack Iran. A trusted Israeli source tells me that Baram learned this from none other than a close confidant of Ehud Barak. In other words, Barak has begun to tell his closest friends that Israel is going to war. Before hearing this, I thought chances of an Israeli attack were 70-30. Now I believe they are 85-15. Another interesting focus of Baram's article is the economic fallout that such an attack will generate. Though he speaks in terms familiar to anyone who reads Mir Dagan's warning on the subject, the columnist focuses specifically on economic issues. He warns a strike will bring an end to international investment in Israeli business and a halt to the flourishing tourism industry. Every Israeli citizen should know that what has been will not be in the future. It will mean the end of today's Israel. It's no secret what will happen. If we attack, the Iranians will respond in kind. The Western and Muslim world, including Iran's allies and enemies, will tighten the siege belt around us. In effect, Baram is warning that a BDS-like state of siege will descend on Israel. It won't be fueled by moral arguments against occupation, as the current BDS movement is. It will be fueled by an even more potent fuel, outrage at Israel's aggression against Iran. This is an exclusive Debcophile video production. On July 27th, just before Friday prayers, Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei summoned top Iranian military chiefs for what he called their last war council.
Deb Kafal's exclusive sources disclosed that he told the gathering, we will be at war within weeks. Each of the participants was tapped to report on the readiness of his branch or sector for shouldering its contingency missions. Retaliation was high on the agenda, but defense was higher, starting with the biggest fortification project in Iran's history for the protection of its nuclear program. Rocks are being gathered from afar, piled on nuclear installations covered with many tons of poured concrete, and finally plated with steel. The strength and thickness of this armor plating are designed to hold up against U.S. and Israeli aerial and missile bombardment. That same Friday, the U.S. Air Force unveiled its new massive ordnance penetrators. Each bunker buster weighs 30,000 pounds and can penetrate 60 feet of reinforced concrete. In retaliation, the War Council endorsed a battery of paybacks for potential U.S. and or Israeli preemptive strikes against its nuclear program. They would start by announcing enhanced uranium enrichment up to 60 percent, and that is close to weapons grade. Ballistic missiles would be loosed against Israel, Saudi Arabia, and American Middle East and Gulf military installations. Hezbollah in Lebanon and Hamas and Jihad Islami in Gaza are to pitch in against Israel. Saudi oil export terminals would be blown up in mines sown in the Strait of Hormuz to impede the export of one-fifth of the world's oil. Khamenei put before his war council a timeline of weeks for the coming conflict, September or October. A timeline of weeks for the coming conflict, September or October. How would a military conflict with Iran or Syria affect the U.S. 2012 presidential election? What is the likelihood that there would be a confrontation involving Iran or Syria and the U.S. and or Israel before the 2012 presidential election? Come on, don't tell me that the probability and time of such a conflict has not crossed your mind. If such a confrontation were to transpire, which presidential candidate will, be, will benefit the most as a result? It is my belief that the incumbent president will benefit the most for several reasons. He will be seen on a regular basis on national TV as the leader of the country, giving him a chance to appear presidential and in charge at a crucial time in the campaign. The incumbent's competition will not be able to overcome such a media barrage. The incumbent's challenges, such as the economy during his term, will be overshadowed by the conflict. Focus and attention on the campaign will be diverted to the immediate military crisis. Americans are hesitant to change leaders during a military conflict, as I'm sure you know, because our level of patriotism and support for our leader increases naturally when we are in a battle with an outside foe. The incumbent will gain an advantage over his challenger if he had an opportunity to obtain experience in military maneuvers and operations during his tenure. The incumbent would be privy to confidential information as it pertains to the conflict and would therefore be better prepared and can speak more intelligently on a highly visible and extremely important subject matter. Can you think of any negative consequences for the incumbent if this scenario was to play out? And can you think of any positives for the challenger if the scenario was to play out? Here's what I think. I think Barack Obama will gain an advantage if another conflict commenced in the Middle East involving the U.S. I think that he would gain so much of an advantage that he would be reelected for a second term. Now, a confrontation involving either Syria or Iran especially will cause the price of oil and gas to increase due to the instability of a region that supplies one-fifth of the world's oil supply. This will cause pretty much everything to go up in price. And as we know, food prices are already on the rise due to the severe droughts we've had this year. So in a nutshell, 
war in the aforementioned regions will result in Americans being poor or having less money. It will further constrain our economy, which is already in recess, if not depressed, mode. The war could very easily metastasize or snowball into a protracted world war, lasting several years with superpowers possessing nuclear arms on both sides. If it does this, it will then also affect international trade, further depressing national economies and could cause a shortage of many types of goods, which cause even more inflation. Needless to say, inflation means that you can't buy as much with your dollar, which means the dollar has lost and is losing value, which means you will most likely see the price of commodities increase like gold and silver. Hint, hint. The stock market will most likely take a major hit. I believe that it is already super inflated by the Fed's quantitative easing and that the Dow should probably be closer to 8,000 based on our current economic condition. The government will be strapped for money, so our national debt will probably go even higher, which may result in higher taxes. Many government programs will most likely be on the chopping block. And if there is a confrontation of any sort that affects the price of oil, regardless if the U.S. is immediately involved or not, I think that it would be very wise to begin placing your priorities on the necessities for life, like food and water. My friends, if you think like I do that there is a good probability that a war could begin in the Middle East over the next two or three months, then you might want to send this video to those you love just so that they are aware of this possibility and the possible consequences so they can prepare. I will also make this video available via DVD, which can be ordered from my website, so that you can share this information with those who may not be on YouTube or online. Okay, thanks for watching. God bless. Peace and love. Thanks for watching Kingdom Knowledge News.